until he says your name, shut your hairy mouth. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping that in. Hello and welcome to another edition of the show called Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and I'm here. Forgot my middle, uh, surname there. Was going to throw in the middle name. David James Warnicky. What's up, everyone? I'm here with uh, Mr. Matthew Stewart. This is your introduction, Matt. Matthew James. Who? Yes, uh, I am Matthew James Stewart. Mm-hmm. Good to be here. In the podcasting studio. It is a studio. It, it is good to be here. And hey, we do you mind if I uh, open up the floor? <laughs> it's quite rude, but okay. To uh, my favourite member of the team. Uh, mm-hmm. She's about to go out on tour. Actually, she'll be out on tour right now, touring Australia. So if you're anywhere around Australia, please check out Jess Perkins. Hello. Hello, Jess and Perkins. <laughs> Thanks for having me in, in my own podcast. <laughs> yeah, you will be on tour. Yep. So we've all just finished up, the time of recording just finished up the Melbourne Comedy Festival, which is my, why my voice sounds a little bit scratchier than usual. <laughs> it's been a long festival. But um, it never ends for some of us. Yes, you're out um, doing the Comedy Festival Roadshow in Queensland yeah. when this comes out. Yep. At this point, I'll be somewhere in Queensland. Where? Not sure. Very <laughs> Don't know where cool. I'll be tomorrow, but yes, it's you, fine. You really aren't sure at all, are you? But that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, if, if anyone's in Queensland, go to comedyfestival.com.au, click on the Roadshow link. Maybe you can see Jess Perkins. Live, live. She'll sign your uh, your bicep after the show. I will, oh, bicep. I will happily sign any biceps. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, this is the show where we have a report prepared. Well, one of us does, and the other two have to uh, just listen to that report. And uh, this week it is my turn to go on. Go on. It's your go turn on. to go on. And these are our favourite episodes because Matt and I just get to sit back, relax. You're the best presenter of the yeah. three of us. Hey. But then we just get to riff. I'm a bit uh, self-conscious about my voice, though. It doesn't sound too good and I'm going to be the one doing the majority of the talking. No, hey, I you think sound your voice normal. sounds normal. <laughs> this is what you always sound maybe like. Maybe even a little bit better than normal. Yeah, I think so. Oh, so you think I should get sick often? Yeah, yeah you know when people... Sick are... often. That was a classic uh, Hottest 100 track from, uh, from the late 90s. Ugh. Um, is that for, for real? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know when people get a bit sick and they sound a little husky or they sound kind of sexy? You don't sound sexy, but you sound great. Yeah, I thought I sounded a bit nasally, to be honest. Hold oh, on. now I can hear it. Yeah, yeah no, it is obnoxious. It is awful. Yeah, we it? should probably cancel the episode. Is it too late? Nah, it's never too late. What I like about Dave's reports are that they normally go for, what, about 10,000 words? 4,000. 4, 4, 000. 000. Oh, 4,000. This one... 4,200. Oh. So I don't know. Every time I get to the end of the... Like, I don't aim for 4,000. I just look at the workout and think, oh, you've done it again. <laughs> God, I'm good. Boom. And I'm, I'm gone. gone. <laughs> yeah. I hit 4,000 and word just shuts down. It's like, you've done enough. Mate, you're done. Mate, you nailed it. That's your word document talking to you. <laughs> okay, so we usually start with a question to get on topic. So um, this time next week from the time of recording, it's actually last week when it goes out, on April the 26th. Yes. 6th, there it is. Wait, is this left-handers day? No, that's in August. It Sorry. is. Uh, it's 30 <laughs> years since one of the biggest events of the 20th Ooh. century. Okay, Can you guess? April. What 30 is? years ago. So April 26th, 1986. 86. I wasn't biggest alive yet. Matt, one of this the, is all I was, I was a couple of years old. What was the... So what was the thing? It's just a massive event. Okay, 86. 86. All right, 86. I was two. I've got to go back to... 86. And when I say massive, like you're probably imagining like big party. It's not a big party or like a celebration. It's, it's a not good thing. Yeah. 86. Okay. Hmm. 86. Not Tw- a big party. April 26, 86. In, in, the wall came down in 89, Yeah, I that's think. what I was thinking, but it's 89. Um, it's in that area. It's in Europe. Okay. okay. 86. 86. Is it Cold War related? Yes, very much so. Okay. Is it a... Uh, a uh, USSR country. USSR country. Yugoslavia. No, I don't want you to guess the country. I want you to guess the... <laughs> Is that even a... It happened... It was in, in the Ukraine. Oh, the Ukraine. April 26th, 1986. Oh, feels like I'm going to f- feel dumb when I have no idea what this is. I have like... Was it some sort of... Has it been made into a movie? Uh, yeah, there was a horror movie that was set around. No, oh, Texas rightly. Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, it is. In Texas, in the Ukraine. All right, I'll, I'll, do you want me... To, just tell us. Maybe I'll just get into it and you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. April 26th, 1986. It was a beautiful sunny spring day for the 50,000 residents of Pripyat, a town in northern Ukraine that borders Belarus. Nearly all of the town's population worked at Chernobyl Nuclear oh. Power Plant. Only oh, three I know what this away. is. It's about Chernobyl. No, that's not where I was going. Hindenburg. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> in the 1930s. What are you thinking? I think it might be. Was it um, the invention of... The light bulb. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, okay, light bulb. Great, cool. <laughs> I, th- I, act- I, like, I swear to God, I thought the light bulb was older than 30 years. Yeah, I know. I funny, a hand yeah. on my heart. Funny. 100%. Celebration. I know. Believe. You would think that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just feels like it's something that's just always been around. It does feel... Yeah. I mean, it has for you. Yeah, true, true, true. Born in 90. Anyway, go on I about the light bulb. I was born into darkness. But... <laughs> I am not talking about the light bulb. I am, of course, talking about the Chernobyl nuclear disaster of April 26th, 1986. When I was in year 11, mm. the year 12's, uh, their drama ensemble piece, because like in, in VCA drama, the first half is your ensemble so like a group and then the second half you saw it and their ensemble was all about chernobyl really so i know like a tiny bit about it right. based on their reenactments and <laughs> offensive was accents. it a musical no was it an interpretive it was, dance it was piece? a serious piece okay have some respect ours the next year was about hurricane katrina so oh my God. teacher like to give us nice light topics the only thing i know about chernobyl is an episode of the simpsons uh mindy and Homer Simpson, uh, like, at some sort of a fair, <laughs> yeah. an yeah. energy fair. No someone, more Chernobyl! Someone yells out, yeah, no more Chernobyls. And they're like, get banned! And I know, <laughs> I right. never knew what that meant uh, until... Today. Just now, <laughs> right the, now. Have you not heard of the Chernobyl? No, I, I definitely have. Sorry, I was playing that for you. Oh, human. good. I, was just, I, I, was just I wish I committed myself to I it. Because I had just built it as one of the biggest events of the last century, and you're like, never heard of it. Never but heard. as a kid, I had no idea what that meant. I would have definitely laughed, because it sounds funny. No more Chernobyl, it does. <laughs> so it's April the 26th, 1986. There's, these people are uh, the residents of Pripyat, as I said. It's a town in northern Ukraine bordering Belarus. And yeah, nearly all of the population worked at Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The plant had four nuclear reactors and was capable of powering 10% of the Ukraine's electricity needs. Only 10%. Lift your game, Chernobyl. Come on. Well, they're going to attempt to lift their game and it's not going to go so well. Um, Spoilers. Spoilers. I, I did... Bill, this as the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. <laughs> uh, when the power plant, when the power plant was under construction in the seventies, Pripyat had been especially built as a like a town where the workers could uh, live. On April, sorry, on September 9th, nineteen eighty-two, a partial core meltdown occurred in reactor number one at the Chernobyl plant. The extent of the accident was not made public until several years later, so they sort of swept that one under the rug. The reactor was repaired and put back into operation within months. Uh, but that was a fraction of the world's worst nuclear disaster that was to occur no less than four years later. Uh, do you know how nuclear power works? Yes. Because I, <laughs> um, I had... Obviously. I had no idea because I'm not a big sciencey guy. And I'm going to this episode, I'm going to attempt to be quite sciencey. We all have arts degrees. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I... I work in a call centre. <laughs> Great. From what I've learned from The Simpsons, it's got something to do with like... Glowing green rods. Yeah. Rods are important. Yeah. <laughs> they are very important. Um, and they they make little explosions of, of uh, love explosions. And they <laughs> harness that energy. Um, this is pretty good. Yeah. Well, love explosions definitely not in the, the guidebook. But, love explosions. But do they harness? They harness, they harness energy. <laughs> harness energy. <laughs> is energy harnessed, Dave? Yes or no? Well, yes, it definitely is. Thank you. Thank you. I rest my case. <laughs> no more Chernobyl. <laughs> um, also, I'll, 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 I'll explain it as I understand it. Great. And if you are a nuclear scientist, why are you listening to this podcast? <laughs> Basically, uh, just like fossil fuel plants, nuclear power plants are powered uh, by steam. They mix up by steam. Water is turned into steam, which then turns a massive uh, turbine, sort of a spinny thing, connected to a generator. It generates electricity. Right. Spinny thing. Spinny thing. Technical term. So just like, just imagine like a giant drill spinning around. It's just, and it's moving because of steam is, is making it move and then that's connected to a generator. Sure. And the more it spins, the more electricity it, it makes. Okay. But the difference is the source of heat that turns the water into steam. In nuclear power plants, the heat to make the steam is created when uranium atoms are split. Here we go. This is a sciencey bit. When large atoms split into one or more smaller atoms, they give off other particles and energy in the process, and that's called nuclear fission. Ah. So each time an atom is split, it creates energy and heat is released, and when you do that billions and billions of times, it creates a huge amount of energy and therefore a lot of heat. So everything, is, everything in the world is made up of tiny atoms, you, me, everything in this room. But uh, some atoms are really stable and happy to stay as they are, but other atoms exist in unstable forms called radioactive isotopes. 
pretty much nuclear power plants split uh, the, these atoms on command by firing neutrons at them, so they fire them at the atom, and then uh, radioactive isotopes will go on splitting themselves automatically. So you fire one at, the, at an atom, and then they create a chain reaction, ah. which, which creates lots. That's why it's so efficient, because unlike fossil fuels, you don't have to burn a lot of shit. You just sort of fire... Pew! I don't know how they do that. It's like tiny and minuscule, but that's what they do. Uh, the brilliant part is when these atoms split, it will produce spare neutrons that crash into other atoms. So you, you fire one and it splits and then it goes, oh, I'm going to run into other shit now. And then they just make this massive chain reaction, which uh, I've seen described as a runaway nuclear avalanche that releases a huge amount of energy in the form of heat. This then turns water into steam that turns the turbine and powers the generator. Ah, is there going to be a test? There will be a test Shit. at the end of the show. That bit at the end sure sounds like something's being harnessed. <laughs> yes. How long were you sitting on that? I, I feel like I feel that. like you didn't listen to David. Did you listen all, to my explanation? I was, no, I, did, I mean, did he say something at the end that could have well, been? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I really zoned out. I was really hoping you were paying attention. Now, uh, the two things when you, people talk about nuclear, they think about either a bomb or a power plant. The difference between a bomb and a nuclear power plant is that the bomb, the, they also have a chain reaction, but it's not controlled, and it just multiplies in like a, fr- a fraction of a second, and suddenly it, it releases so much energy that it just flattens everything. Uh, but in a nuclear power plant, the chain reactions are very carefully controlled, so they proceed at a relatively slow rate. Mm, so it's a slow okay. burn. So it sounds real safe, right? Mm. Real safe. What could yeah. possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? End of episode. <laughs> yeah. And that is how <laughs> nuclear power works. Okay, so on a very basic level, that is how it works. What they do is they load up a nuclear reactor with lo- lots of pallets of uranium and uh, in rods. Thank so you. Green runs, and uh, it makes heat very efficiently. The only other thing you have to know in this story is that nuclear material like uranium, when not properly looked after, is extremely dangerous. Okay. So when not properly looked after. When not properly so looked after. So when you look after it properly, you give it a nice little bath. Yeah. And you tuck it into bed nice and early, read yeah. the story. Just good night, uranium. Good night. Go to and he sleep. Had, and he had a baby brother Go also made of uranium. And it lasts forever, right? It just doesn't break down the... It's very efficient. After a while, every few years they have to replace these uranium because they get depleted. By uh, where do you Uraniums. get uranium? Uh, yeah, it's mined. Outback Australia. It's, yeah, it's mined uh, in tiny, in like rocks, hmm. and then uh, they have to crush up the rock, and it's like a tiny percentage, like you know, point five percent or something. So they have to dig up a lot of shit to find. I think it. You can't just get it at like office works. Definitely not. It's very because it is so dangerous. Yeah, you have to go to <laughs> office works. I'm looking for uranium. No. Oh, oh, I six. need uh, to go a six-pack of highlighters. <laughs> I need a pack of uh, A4 paper and uh, some uranium, please. Ooh, sounds to me like you're doing a drama solo. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> Off the cuff? No, that's in the script. This whole show is scripted. Did you, you're reading the script, right, Matt? Harness. Oh, that was your keyword yeah, for the yeah. episode. <laughs> uh, so... So it's real dangerous to uranium if you don't look after it properly. And the very sad irony in this story is that the accident at Chernobyl occurred during an experiment to test a way of cooling the core of the reactor in an emergency situation. Oh. So it's a safety test oh. gone wrong. Uh, the test was incorporated into, into a scheduled shutdown of reactor number four. Number four. So we've had a problem in reactor one a couple of years ago, but mm-hmm. now we're talking about reactor number four. So at Chernobyl, they kept the reactor, the thing that's full of the ura- uranium, uh, cool with water. A water uh, pump pumps in water so it doesn't get too hot because if it gets really hot, then you can have a meltdown. In an emergency, the reactor can be shut down very quickly but still very hot and needs water to keep flowing in, in to keep it cool all the time. Otherwise, it's like it becomes like a giant uh, kettle that boils itself dry mm. and then you're in real trouble. <laughs> Uh, in the event of a power failure, or if someone takes out, if there's an attack or something where they cut the power to the reactor, Chernobyl had three backup diesel power generators that would kick in to keep that water flowing, to keep it sure. cool all the time. The problem is that these diesel bad boys took 60 seconds to warm up Uh-oh. before the water would start flowing again, and uh, that's a lot of time Yeah. In, in this situation. The worry was that in the time, the reactor could get really, really hot. So it was theorised that uh, because the steam is already turning the turbine... If the power fails, that turbine's going to keep spinning for a little bit because yeah. it's got a lot of momentum behind it. So they thought, oh, why don't we just use the energy of that powering down, the spinning turbine, um, to sort of bridge the gap between the 60 seconds and the, where the diesel has to sort of fire up. That makes sense. Makes sense to that me. That seems to be quite, uh, quite um, efficient. That's, you know what that is? That's harnessing. 
the power that they oh, already yeah. had. That's good. Mm. I'm glad they uh, they did that, and it sounds like it went well. But I <laughs> I just want like it feels like a funny thing to go. Yeah, we'll just maybe we'll just just use that. We'll yeah. see how that goes. I'll just see how that goes. No. Well, Surely it was more than just a hunch that they were going off. Well, they, no, I will say they tried it a couple of times in the early 80s, early on. Uh, they, it didn't have enough momentum to keep the, the pump going. So they modified uh, the way the machines work. And in 1986, they were ready to test it again. Mm-hmm. So they'd done a couple of tests. And uh, reactor number four was already going to have a, a maintenance shutdown. It was already going to be shut down for the test. So they're like, oh, we'll, we'll just do it there. And that makes sense. It um, does make sense. And no detrimental effect on the safety of the re- reactor was anticipated. They... Um, I have read that one of the engineers estimated that uh, th- they thought that it was a one in ten million chance every year that there would ever be a meltdown. One in ten. Million. One in ten million. So they were pr- they thought it was pretty much they thought it was uh, theoretically okay. possible, but also like come on. I'm okay with those odds. One mm. in yeah. ten mil. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, unless it was um, unless I'd bought a lotto ticket. What would you What would you equate those kind of odds to? You know, in I'm great at life? maths. What would you What's something else that you think would be one in ten? One million? in ten million. You know, maybe something to do with Dave Warnicky. Um, what about a or oh, one in ten million? Maybe like a an asteroid hitting your street. Like it's really? Very specific. Like if it hit you, that would probably be like one in one hundred million. But an asteroid hitting your street is one in ten million. That's my guess. That's my guess. Having a really good podcast. <laughs> one in ten. One million. in ten mil. That means there's probably one good podcast out there. Yeah. And it's this I mean. one, yeah. you're very lucky to be hearing it. Jeez, that's lucky. God, we're lucky. I'd but, say I'd say uh, Dave Warnicky is a one in ten million chance of ever wearing a, a dud T-shirt. Yeah, he's got great T-shirts. Great T-shirts. One, one in ten million. And I don't think I've ever seen a repeat. No. He does. He chucks them in the I'll throw them away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very inefficient. I'm the opposite of nuclear power. <laughs> that's me. One in ten million, so I have to live like a, a hundred thousand lifetimes before you'll see me wear the same shirt twice, or before you see a dud shirt. Dud shirt. Dud shirt. Yeah. Dud shirt. Yeah. You Please. can repeat if you want to. It's fine. There's no judgment here. Thank you kindly. Uh, because they thought nothing was going to go wrong, uh, the test program was not formally coordinated with either the chief designer of the reactor or the scientific manager of the plant. Oh, they didn't think to run that by them. Yeah. Instead, it was just improved by only the director of the plant. And uh, this approval is not consistent with established safety procedures. Oh, because they thought it was like a little thing. Oh, we'll just give it a go. It's cool. We don't have to tell you about it. Carl, <laughs> we're just gonna do a test. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That classic Ukrainian name, Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Well, I'm not gonna do an accent because I don't is, know a Ukrainian. Is that like a, that's Lenny and Carl chatting? No, I just like the name Carl. Carl. I yeah, because it was the director. Like that's the that's I'm imagining that's the boss of the whole place. But he has bosses too. Yeah, and he is not necessarily an expert on this. No, sh- it feels like he maybe should have gone. Look, oh yeah, it's yeah, fine yeah. with me. <laughs> but do you mind if we check with someone who knows about this yeah. sort of stuff? Yeah, you would think, yeah, but he was like drunk on power. Like they'd asked him. They never they never spoke to him in like they never included him in the tea room. Right. You know, like he, they, social situations. Yeah, he was excluded. Like, it's, it's hard when you're the boss because you've got to have that 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 boundary of like being a leader but also like being a friend you want to be a friend and so they never really come to him with things so then when they finally came to him like hey Carl do you mind if we do you mind if we just do this test he was like oh my god they're talking to me they're including me <laughs> he got really excited yeah, he's like yes yes him. a thousand times yes what was the question again yeah. <laughs> my god it's... did you ask me do you, was it about going to the soccer this week because yes oh it was a um, test for test for uh, <laughs> no, no, still yes. Yeah, no, it's still, so far. Yeah, so was his defense. I stick with my first answer. Yeah, I love you guys. Yeah, no. was if I was. was I'm gonna make a cup of tea. Anybody else want one? Okay. See that was his defense when he was on trial after the accident? Like, oh, I thought they asked if I wanted to go to the soccer. Yeah. Fuck. So what, I didn't want to make a scene when I realized. Well, you joke about that, but we'll get to why sort of safety wasn't uh, a big concern. Because soccer. Because That's soccer. <laughs> All right, a bit more science. The plan was to get the power output of the oh. reactor up to 700 megawatts. Science! So, so they wanted to be between 700 and 1,000 megawatts, and then they would, they would have an emergency su- shutdown, and then the energy from that 700 megawatts would keep the turbine spinning long enough to keep the water flowing. Mm. So that's what they want. That's the key number. They want to get to 700. Matt's yawning. Oh, man, this is <laughs> fucking boring. 
Well, don't worry, the meltdown. Tell me more about the 700 megatrops or whatever. <laughs> I can't, I could not give less of a shit. <laughs> megatrots. Hashtag megatrots. And it's just a really big horse. <laughs> Oh, the one that uh, was designed by Da Vinci? Yeah, Megatrots. <laughs> I am Megatrot. <laughs> yep. I was trying to do a horse noise and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Megatrot wears a cape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. <laughs> Dave is not on board with Megatrots at all. Well... I just know that we are about 19 minutes away from the worst nuclear disaster in So let us have our history. fun now. Oh, okay. So Megatrot. You, you... Megatrot. But it, it, is, it is important. The 700 megawatt thing is actually quite important. Oh, megawatt. 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 <laughs> we can call them megatrots if you like. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Do go on. No, this is... Yeah, I'm, I, at this stage, I'm just hoping no one loses their life in this thing because that, <laughs> that would, would be make terrible. this all feel very We'd inappropriate. Look very insensitive. Mm. Mega what? <laughs> <laughs> so they have to get it between 700 and 1,000 mega what? <laughs> and if test conditions had been as planned, the procedure would almost certainly have been carried out safely. But we know it wasn't. What? <laughs> mega what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. At 1am when the first steps of the test were starting to take place, another regional power station unexpectedly went offline and the Kiev electrical grid controller requested more power from Chernobyl, so they had to delay turning off the reactor. Ah. Uh, So it was delayed. At 11pm, the shutdown was allowed to start, which is like nearly 24 hours later, 22 hours later. This long delay had some serious consequences. The day shift had long since departed, the evening shift were also preparing to leave, and the night shift would not take over until midnight, well into the job. And the night shift had very limited time to prepare for and carry out the experiments. So it was kind of like these guys in the day were supposed to do it, but then at night suddenly you're like, oh, what? We're going to do a shutdown? Oh. oh, I just wanted to catch mm-hmm. up on yeah, that, that, that TV show. Yeah, watching. and people don't need as much power at night, so it's usually like a pretty cruisy shift. Yeah. I was going to watch uh, f- season three of Family Ties on Netflix. Family Ties. Part, part, of, part of that was definitely. Part of that worked, show? and then was, part of it. Yeah, the did Netflix not. didn't. That was was that, that important in, in back then? I know the light bulb wasn't. Yeah. Oh, it was about to be. <laughs> yeah. so, so the light bulb comes about in this. Yeah, like so it's one of those. Often that happens in science, isn't it? You know, they're trying to find something else, and then as a weird side effect, they invent a light bulb. It's always a light bulb. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah everybody just keeps inventing light bulbs. Over the year, we've invented thousands of times. Chuck it in the pile. <laughs> yeah. At the back, there's a pile. Cure cancer. I made six light bulbs. Ugh. How many? How many megawatts? Megatrots. How many? Megawatts. Oh, 700 normal trots. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of small room. Good on you, fuckhead. Get out of here. Alexander Akimov. That's a good name, isn't it? Akimov. Akimov was the person in charge of the shift, the night shift. Akimov opposed conducting the test in such conditions, uh, but he was ordered to continue by his supervisor. I do not think we should do the test. <laughs> Is that offensive? <laughs> No, um, no, that's fine. That was pretty accurate, I imagine. I imagine. Well, that was the most offensive thing so far. I imagine. imagine. Well, I've watched, in the documentaries, they all spoke like that. It, it, yeah. Yeah, genuinely. English, English, and uh, some some was being English, some was being translated. Uh, the reactor. He was telling his boss uh, it was an, it was unstable, unsafe to, for the test to be run. But his supervisor. Anatoly Dyatlov. Oh, great day. Threatened to fire him if he didn't shut up and continue the test. Oh, well that yeah. You don't want to lose your job. That'd be awkward. I'm going to just go ahead and do one of the worst things of all time. Yeah, because he knows it's going to be the worst thing of all time. Yeah, he does what know. A he knows. Pe- what a re- does he really? Yeah, he knows. Well, I, that's a whole new piece of information <laughs> I wasn't aware of. He knew, <laughs> and just to save his fucking job, this piece of work... <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> well, Dyatlov was later... You're a dickhead! <laughs> well, Dyatlov was a dickhead. He was later found guilty for criminal mismanagement of potentially explosive enterprises and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Ooh. He also uh, died. Uh, that, but No, he lived. <gasps> he lived to... He went to jail for five oh, years. So, so people survived this. 
But did he grow extra things or? There is. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll get we'll get oh, to that. I don't I don't I don't need to know about that. I feel like when we get to that bit, I'm going to be very disrespectful, and you need to keep me in line because they're real people. Feel free to put down An- Anatoly Dyatlov. Dyatlov. It is a lot. To, can be blamed on that guy. Okay. Then we have a third guy. So there's not um, too many names in this story, but uh, Leonid. Or Leonid. Just Leonid. <laughs> Leonid. <laughs> it's spelled in a different way that I'm used to, but I imagine it's Leonid Toptonov. Toptonov. They're all I wish good I had names. pen and paper to write these names down. He was the um, Toptonov. It's fine. I'll remember. No, I'm great. I'll keep reminding you. Toptonov was the operator responsible for the reactor's operational regimen, including movement of control rods. Now, fin- rods. Final science bit. Control rods. They're not. They don't have nuclear stuff in them. They're rods um, uh, that are in- inserted into the reactor to control the fission. They're both the brakes and the accelerator. So the the further you put it in, the slower <laughs> the splitting is. Did you? Are you laughing at? You are you finding putting a rod into a reactor quite reactor sexual? sexual? <laughs> No. A reactor. What's the reactor in I'm this? I'm laughing at something I also heard earlier today. Shut up. <laughs> but the reactor Rods you're picturing is like someone's butt, aren't you? You think a reactor is another name for a butt. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. It's pretty funny. We talked about inserting a rod. Oh, what? my reactor. <laughs> <laughs> I got an algae. Get your rod out of my reactor. Control your rod, mate. pretty fun. That's a fun word for butt. A nuclear reactor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I had a big curry last night. The nuclear reactor is not responding well. Get the control rod in there. This is a plug. Um. Plug it up your asshole. That's what this whole story is about. <laughs> We're uh, back to that. It's like he's burial one all over it's again. All pl- yeah, every it ep- all comes back to us. Yeah, I just want to talk about you. plugging people up. This does feel like our lowest common denominator episode so far. And we, we're normally pretty low. I know, but we're trying to explain science to the people. It's hard. We're science. trying to bring it down to the people's yeah. level. Layman's terms. So, well, let me explain it to you. So you insert these control rods to slow or stop nuclear fission. So if your atoms are going crazy and splitting too much, causing too much heat, you send in the control rods who gate crash the party sure. and ruin it for everyone. <sighs> They're kind of like cops. Or Dave Warnke. Like for a noise complaint. Like they go in there and then they... You know, everything's getting a little bit crazy. Everybody the neighbors call the down. police. They put the control rods. They turn like, the lights on. Yeah, the lights are on, and you're like, "Oh my god, where am I?" Yeah, that's it. They would turn the lights on. I was if at been the invented yet. I was at the closing night party of the comedy festival when they did turn the lights on at five thirty in the morning and oh. kicked everybody out. That was the control rod. That you was the control rod. were a uranium particle splitting. Oh baby, way too much. I was a uranium particle splitting. Bloody splitting everywhere. Fishing on the dance floor. <laughs> nah, I was quite responsible when I just went home. See, these control rods are pretty good, They're aren't pretty they? good. They yeah. do the job. Keep you in check. Do the job. Keep you in check. Uh, Toptonov, the operator I just mentioned, Leonid Toptonov, he was <laughs> a uh, young 26-year-old engineer who'd worked independently as a senior engineer for only three months, so he's not very experienced. He uh, inserts the control rods too far into the reactor and, uh, oh jeez! Oh, no. <laughs> My reactor. So he he wanted it to slow down the process, but he he put the rods in too far, and now it's only outputting thirty megawatts of power. Remember, it's supposed to be seven hundred. That's right, megatrods. And then he put it in even further. Wait, so it's supposed to be seven hundred? It's only doing thirty. Only doing thirty, and then it stalls altogether. So Ooh. all the reaction stops. There's no energy. Oh, but is that, that's not bad though. Um, it's not good if you want to do an experiment. Yeah, but it's not going to lead to an explosion or anything. No, it's just no, stopping no, no. everything. But, see, now it's got no power. Mm. They've got to do something about it. Dyatlov, the guy who I imagine is going to go to jail later on, he ordered everyone to restore power and get the party started again by disabling the automatic system governing control rods and manually extracting the majority of the reactor control rods out of the reactor. So what's happened is... Matt's falling asleep. I'll explain. So what happened is... You've had too much rod go in there, so it stopped. So he's ordered, let's get all the rods out of there to get it going real quick. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is, now he's taken all of those out. You've essentially taken your brake out. You've taken the, any control out. Yeah, and also the safety backup ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Dyatlov did this despite the young man, Toptonov, protesting this was considered unsafe in his training. But uh, Dyatlov wanted to get the test done that night and ignored his subordinates. No one really wanted to lose their well-paid, uh, respected jobs as nuclear engineers because they get paid to work at the power plant and they also get their rent paid and it's quite a prestigious thing. Sure. 
So everyone's like, all right, here's the boss. Nice. We'll just do what the boss Fucking says. Fucking hell. Alarms started going off about core temperature and were ignored. Apparently, because they wanted to preserve the power because it was um, being outputted by the reactor. So the power's getting more, but alarms are like, ah, oh, this is a little too much. And they were like, nah, keep going, keep it going. Dave, I'm starting to think there was a little bit of human error involved. I'm, uh... <laughs> Matt, that's an interesting pickup you have there. Thank you. You're a very observant, observant young man. Mm-hmm. Oh, they started hearing sirens and people were like, oh, the cops are coming. Should we turn the music down? And they're like, fuck them. Fuck them. I only turned 16 once. Keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! That was Let's... David. He's 16. But yeah, yeah I was time. yelling, let's keep the nuclear reactor rocking. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Fuck those control rod pigs. You're still talking about your butt? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck those control rod pigs in my butt. Uh, power got up to... <laughs> Power got up to 200 megawatts, so it's getting back towards 700. That's a lot. And the experiment continued. But by this stage, nearly all control rods were, had been removed manually, including all but 18 of the 211 fail-safe control rods. Look, I'm no nuclear scientist, oh. but I really don't think you should be removing anything that says fail-safe. Yeah, probably not. So they had not. 211 of these fail-safe things, and they pulled out um, all but 18 of them. Uh, the automated system that inserts all the rods in an emergency had also been disabled to maintain power level, and many other automated and even uh, other passive safety features of the reactor had been bypassed. And yet the experiment continued. At 1.23 a.m., the steam to the turbines were shut off, and a uh, rundown of the turbine generator began. So that's when uh, the minute of where you're trying to get the turbine making oh, power sure, while the yep. diesel stuff fires up, so they're starting that bit. As the momentum of the turbine de- generator decreased, because it's got no steam powering it anymore, the water flow rate decreased, so there's less water going oh. into the reactor now, leading to increased formation of steam bubbles in the core, which increased the reactor's power output even more. This output increased, caused more water to turn into steam, giving further power increase. So now they've got this weird loop where the more uh, power they have, the more steam is increased, and the more steam is increased, the more, more power. power. And it keeps just sort of uh, self-fulfilling itself. Too much power. Too much fucking power. Uh, this <laughs> <laughs> Is that your impression of a nuclear reactor? Yeah. <laughs> One more time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, my next bit was... Um, People in the um, next to the reactor remember hearing a sound that night that sounded a lot like. Eek, eek. That's not true. I just made that up. <laughs> oh, that's not true. That's not true. Oh, was that Dave just being a little bit funny? Hey, was Dave. It? Just all we ask is you to commit. All right, mate. Stop bailing on your sweet gear. Thank no, you. No, leave him to do the facts. Leave the jokes to us, mate. Okay. All right. Thanks. We're gonna. I'm. Um, yeah. I've been searching all episode for a joke. I will find one. But it's, it's tricky. <laughs> It's a tricky game. I really got you with Megatrots. And oh, yeah, that's so, yeah. Well, you said Megatrots, but then I really... Oh, you really? You took it, it, yeah. I took... I ran it's with a, it. It's, it was like we're it's in... It's like an alley-oop. I thought it was more like, you know, you were the steam and I was the heat thing. Uh-huh. And then we made bubbles. The more power and the bubbles. It just creates more and more. Yeah. Jokes are very similar to nuclear power. Yeah. They it's all are. fission. It's all fission, baby. So I remember hearing Everyone's that after. Everyone's a fission, baby. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> So they've got this crazy loop going on where it's getting hotter, more steam. Oh, it's getting hotter, more energy, baby. More steam, all this steamy, stuff. It is uh, hot and steamy in there. Usually, this would be controlled by inserting these emergency control rods. When it but gets hot and steamy, we insert the rods. Mm-hmm. But guess who's mm-hmm. disabled those? Remember, they turn those off. Trotsky. No. <laughs> no. That's Leonard Nimoy. Else. Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Leonard Nimoy and Dyatlov. <laughs> Uh, it's like telling the police to piss off when they come over for a noise complaint, but then bikies rock up and you're like, oh no, come back, come back, oh shit, oh, fucked it, the nuclear power has gone off. Explosion time. At 1.23 a.m. Oh, and 40 seconds, an emergency shutdown of the reactor. That's the most insensitive this has ever been described. Boom, explosion so time. So cold. That was the coldest. And we're talking about Cold War time. We really are. At uh, 1.23 a.m. and 40 seconds, an emergency shutdown of the reactor. They started panicking. They're like, we've got to shut this bad boy down. This mm. party's over. Someone just got out a gun and fired into the air. <laughs> Farted into the air? <laughs> no, fired into the air. <laughs> Actually, so good. You get out a gun and everyone's like, he's going to shoot anyone? And, just... <laughs> <laughs> and people left that fucking party in five seconds. Uh, but they, this emergency shutdown 
inav- inadvertently triggered an explosion. It is pets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they have followed through. They have definitely followed through. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Well, at least everyone's left the party. <laughs> Probably got to clean myself up. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, so an emergency... That was when you went too far. I was happy with it. An emergency shuts down of a reactor is called a SCRAM, S-C-R-A-M, which apparently stands for, I love this, Safety Control Rod Axe Man. Oh, okay. So you're the Safety Control Rod Axe Man. You've got like, boo, and you like try and insert these rods to shut it down. Boo. I think it's the best acronym I've ever Scram. heard. Scram. Safety Control Rod Axe Man. Put that on my resume. It does feel like, it like, and so many of those are like that, but they'll... They'll get close to a word, and then they'll have to like shoehorn another word or two in to make to make scram to make scram, scram sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah, and easier to remember. Safety control rod man, scrum axe man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just to imagine uh... a guitarist like playing a secret riff that turns on the the reactor <laughs> shutdown. <laughs> and the reactor's like. Shut down, initiated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then he plays the wrong one and it, it calls the cops. That's, that's well, where the explosion pizza. happened. <laughs> yeah, it orders a pizza. Pizza ordered. Oh, Damn fuck. it. Shit, what is it? No. 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 Oh, I want to know anchovies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if it's a different riff. <laughs> they did, the Soviet Union was a strange time. It's a weird system. Everything controlled by guitar riffs. It would have been easier to just press a few buttons. A few but, buttons, okay. no. But we've got a safety control right axe, man. We need to make that bloody initialism. Yeah. No, acronym. It is an acronym, SCRAM. Basically, the a SCRAM, you want to get your rods in there to stop the, the reactor ASAP. You want to get your rod in there. ASAP, as that's an initialism. Can. ASAP, it's that's quickly. right. Quickly, you want to get your rod in quick. You want to get your rod in quick and you want to leave it in there real deep, real deep, just to stop everything. But a few seconds after the start of the scram, a massive power spike occurred. The core overheated, and seconds later, the overheating resulted in an, 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 the initial explosion. Oh. It's going to be a few of these. Oh. Some of the fuel rods inside, which is the stuff with uranium in it, uh, fractured, blocking the control rods and, uh, bl- and stopping them from being able to be inserted. So you can't put them in anymore. So there's been an explosion. The rods are now blocked, so you can't get it in there to stop it all. Uh, so the power spiked. Within three seconds, three seconds, the reactor rose above 530 megawatts, which has doubled in three seconds, the power output. Wow. The power spike caused an increase in fuel temperature and massive steam buildup, leading to a rapid increase in steam pressure. Then, according to some estimations, the reactor jumped to around 30,000 megawatts. 30,000? 30, 30, but they just wanted it to be at 700. 700, I know. Now they've gone way too far the other direction. Oh, shit. Earlier they had bloody 30. Now they've got 30,000. 30,000. And that is... A, that's too bloody many megatrots. It's too many megatrots. Megatrots. Oh, my... That's 10 times the normal operation output. Too much. That is crazy. But that, suddenly everyone's internet was really fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and f- unfortunately, it's 1 a.m., so no one's online. Yeah. It's a real waste. Such of, a off, waste. Peak. off peak. Yeah. It's off peak. Is yeah. anyone else picturing uh, when they're talking about when they, being Dave, talking about inserting <laughs> rods and stuff that they're just standing right at the top of those cooling towers, you know, the, mm. the, and just like dropping them in? Dropping them big, in. Is that no, like I'd it's a cauldron like, or something? Yeah, but I'm imagining them very kind of like easy. 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 Yeah, on a string, yeah, lowering, yeah, yeah, it lowering it in. Is that, is that kind of how it was? Uh, it's more of a ro- robotic sort of system. Disappointing. Oh, a robot at the top of the cooling tower dropping in, I think, via a string. I get it. Now I'm imagining C-3PO, like that kind of robot. Beep, bop, beep. D- yep. With a guitar. <laughs> That's, right. yeah, C-3PO with a guitar at the top of the nuclear reactor. I'm wow. glad that I'm painting such a vivid picture. <laughs> such vivid pictures. And uh, explosive steam pressure from the damaged fuel channels escaping into the reactor's exterior, because it's sort of cracked a bit now. It's going everywhere. It caused a detonation that destroyed the reactor casing, which, which is the thing that holds everything together. Yeah. It's encased. Uh, this we, know, we know what casings are, Dave. <laughs> that was the one word you didn't have to explain today, but thank you. <laughs> I do have a dictionary definition of every word in here. Uh, tearing. Do you want tear? No. It would, no uh, it's 4,000 words. <laughs> Yeah, because every every single word has a footnote, uh, which it tore off and blasted the two thousand ton upper plate. So the roof of the thing it just explodes off from the steam, and it fires into the air. The entire reactor assembly is fastened to this, and it goes through the roof of the building. It just goes. Shit. 
So like real bad. A second more powerful expo- explosion occurred two or three seconds later. This explosion uh, damaged the core even more. The reactor's containment vessel, the thing holding it all in, was ruptured and burning lumps of material and sparks shot into the air above the reactor. This nuclear excursion released 40 billion joules of energy, the equivalent of 10 tons of TNT. And uh, uranium and graphite, which is really, really poisonous now, is spread hundreds of metres around the plant. So it just goes everywhere real quick. When I was working in retail at a big shopping centre... You had a similar story. Similar story. When it used to rain really heavily, sometimes the roof would leak and we were on the top level and we'd get like bits of water coming into the store... And I remember sort of like the panic because we didn't know what to do. Imagine this situation. <laughs> like imagine being there and just like shit is literally shit, exploding. Like, exploding everywhere. Something just went through the roof of the fucking plant. Yeah. It's so big. A spray of fire charged with radio- radioactive particles shoots 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 metres into the sky. What? Above. So it's massive explosion straight up above the reactor. Is that high enough to hit a plane? <laughs> I was just wondering, is that would that have gone over the Rialto? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. For the Wait, real, for the for listeners, Rialto was a tall building in Melbourne. It's like and yeah. not even the used tallest. Used to be the tallest. No. Uh, used yeah, to be. A, but maybe in 1986, it probably would have been. Would have been. Definitely would have been. Yeah. Great I've, 80s reference. Thank man. you. So good. So now there's just a massive gaping hole above the reactor. Big. Big gaping hole for the man. Them to I keep talking about these things. In. Didn't even think about any of this when I wrote Explosions, that Explosions, gaping holes. Sounds like my vision. weekend. <laughs> Not at all. I'm very lonely. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I just don't want to say anything anymore. Um, <laughs> so we, it's easy to blame these dudes in the control room, but also later on after the USSR was dissolved, KGB documents from the time... Uh, it dissolved the whole USSR? <laughs> Bloody hell. That's how big this is. <laughs> so... Documents were released stating that the authorities, when they were building the nuclear power plant, uh, ignored warnings in the 70s and 80s that Chernobyl had design flaws. But uh, Chernobyl's director received big bonuses when he rushed the building of the plant, and uh, num- reactor number four in particular was completed ahead of schedules. So he was getting all these bonuses oh. for getting it done. For example, contrary to safety regulations, bitumen, which is a combustible material, had been used uh, in construction of the roof of the reactor building even though in the plan it was supposed to be something that couldn't uh, combust. Right. And uh, this resulted in uh, when the material was uh, blasted through the roof, it's all on fire because it's so hot, it starts five fires on the roof of the adjacent reactor number three. So now you have to worry about two nuclear reactors. Uh, It was imperative these fires are put out to protect the cooling system of reactor number three. So first on the scene, when you have a fire, you call the... Police! Firefighters! But they had no idea. Pizza man. Wait, I'll keep guessing. I'll get it. Yeah. Uh, Pizza guy. Postman. Uh, You do the riff. You do the riff. Your mum. You call your mum. I probably would call my mum, but that's because I know nothing about nuclear power plants. And well, she doesn't either. But I need a bit of um, reinforcement. It's just something kind of comforting about your mum when you're a bit bit stressed. Need a bit of comfort. Need your mum. It's starting to sound like there's a a few things went wrong, and it all culminated in in a disaster. Thanks for that, Matt. Great. Good contribution. I'm glad you are realising that. Yeah, fuckhead. Do you feel do you feel like that's an accurate thing to no, say? No, I don't. Because you think, like, I always figure, you know, it's like, oh, just one bad thing happened. But no, it's... A but it's like, oh, it was designed poorly and they had idiots running it. It's like, so many bad things had to happen. And they were out of time, so they did yeah, it when they lot. weren't planning to do it. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And then they're, they're not ready for any of this, this kind of stuff to happen. You've yeah. you got a nuclear power plant you think that you'd be ready. First on the scene of the firefighters, they had no idea how... They thought that there was just a fire. No one told them that it was from the reactor. So they thought they was putting out a fire. So they're not wearing any safety gear. Oh. They're getting as close as anyone ever gets. And uh, they had no idea how... There's radioactive smoke all around them. And um, Also imagine... Because it's on the roof, right? So I'm imagining this is quite high as well. It's, it's on the roof, but then uh, inside the reactor is so hot that it's um, like molten magma so they're just pouring water onto it pouring water which actually does nothing oh shit which doesn't work it doesn't put it out this type of fire uh they thought it was an electrical fire because that's what probably what they're used to they no one at the time thought even the people in the control room thought there'd been something else had happened they didn't realize they'd had a meltdown right so how do you not realize just uh, well 
Uh, the power had shut off as well, so like a lot of their safety stuff's gone out. So they're Plus like, they were ignoring oh. the alarms anyway. Also, yeah, exactly. They were ignoring the alarms. And uh, so the big boss, the guy that would go to jail, he stays behind. He doesn't die. But uh, he, the two people that I was talking about before that were objecting, they go to see what's gone on and they would later die of radiation poisoning. Oh, Because they, they had no... They just thought there'd be an explosion. They're like, what's going on? And then they went there. Oh. But the radiation is so intense that uh, two of the firefighters die that night, so it just kills them almost straight away. What? Now, the nearby town of Pripyat, where everyone's living, only three kilometres away, it's not immediately evacuated. They hear the explosions that night, but they're not told of the disaster and are completely oblivious as to the danger they're now in. Oh, so, that sucks. Uh, some people start to fall ill within hours. They're like, what's going on? Because there's radioactive uh, sort of pollution going throughout the air. What com- kind of... What kind of- uh, like the 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 firefighters who died of radiation poisoning. Yep. Like, what sort of symptoms are attributed right, so you, to radiation? So, poisoning? if you have radiation poisoning, uh, you start uh, feeling sick, and then you have vom- vomiting and diarrhea, and then like intense, and then there's this latency period where everything seems okay, and then it starts to get worse again, which is really really bad, and you start uh, developing radioactive burns. And oh. The, yeah, like really, which are really really bad. Yuck. And uh, yeah, and it also um, it changes the composition of your blood. Really, it's such an intense <gasps> thing. Yeah, so it's really really bad. And if you get really close, um, the burns can kill you within hours or days. That's incredible. Or but it can also affect you, and you can develop sicknesses later on, which we'll unfortunately talk about. Do you think yeah. it's possible that one day there'll be a human that can withstand that, and it'll actually make them superhuman? Probably not. Okay. Okay, no, but good question though. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. It's a good question. Hmm. A commission was set up on the same day, sort of in the daylight hours, to investigate the accident. It was uh, headed by Valery Legasov, an inter- internationally renowned nuclear physicist who would uh, commit suicide of the guilt over the way the disaster was handled two years later. Oh, boy. So they didn't handle it very well. In the town of Pripyat, it's discovered that the radiation levels that next day are already 15,000 times more than usual. Shit. And by that evening, by the evening, 24 hours later, the levels have hit 600,000 times their natural occurrence. Oh. So in that first day, the inhabitants received 50 times what is considered an acceptable dose of radiation. If they'd stayed, they would have all died uh, in just four days. So the commission made it to the plant that night, and by that time, two people had died. 52 were in hospital, these firefighters and stuff, and they were like, okay, it's bad. We fucked up. They didn't realise how bad it was straight away, but then when they're getting these levels um, they, they, start, they soon realised that the reactor was destroyed and extremely high levels of radiation had caused a number of cases of radiation exposure the levels of radiation at the reactor 4 itself like ground zero are so high that they would give a human being a lethal dose in 15 minutes wow so you can't go pretty much near it and the radiation levels are getting higher every second it's getting worse and worse and worse uh, in the early hours of April 27th, 24 hours after the blast, they ordered the evacuation of the town. So they're finally getting everyone out. 24 hours later, though. Yeah. So by this time, people have been exposed to quite a lot of radiation. Uh, Residents were told they would only be gone for three days, but they they never went back. Like, it's still abandoned now. So you can... um, Like, there's documentaries and stuff. The town is pretty much is as it was on that day. Oh, wow. Because people were told you'd be back in three days and they didn't have enough um, time to pack things. They had to get out straight away. So they pretty much took the clothes on their back and the rest of their houses and furniture is still like sort of pristine. Oh, 30 wow. year time So people capsule. have gone in with cameras and stuff. Yeah, cameras and stuff, yeah. Uh, the next day, talks began for evacuating people from a 10-kilometre zone around the area. Then 10 days later, they decided, no, it's not enough. So they evacuated 30 kilometres around. The he- it's called the exclusion zone. It's still in intact. There's a 30 kilometre exclusion zone. 130,000 people are evacuated. So it's a big operation. Massive. 130,000. Yeah. Like, wow. So this evacuation began long before the accident was publicly known throughout the Union and let alone the world. On April 28th, two days after the disaster, radiation levels set off alarms at a nuclear power plant in Sweden, a thousand kilometres away. And they panicked that they'd had a... They were like, what's going on? Like their instruments started going off. And then they call up the nuclear commission. They're like, something's going on. Do you know? Has anyone... And USSR has tried to keep this quiet because it's the Cold War. They don't want to look weak. They don't want to tell anyone what's going on. Uh, So American spy satellites uh, discover the smouldering plant 
So they see a photo of it, and then uh, the Soviet Union are forced to publicly admit that a small accident has occurred. We had a little whoopsie, but uh, everything's fine. And uh, the, it's crazy. Like at um, at nine or two that night, a twenty second announcement was read in the TV news, and this is all. <laughs> this is all it said. There's been an accident at the Chernobyl, Chernobyl nuclear power plant. One of the nuclear reactors was damaged. The effects of the accidents are being remedied. Assistance has been provided for any affected people. An investigative commission has been set up. Right. And that is the only mention they make of the disaster. Was it... Had anything like this happened before? Like, did they... Would they... Were they aware of how deadly it could be? Uh, so this is the... Still considered the worst nuclear disaster in history. And uh, before that point, there'd been a, a few sort of littler things, but n- not many people have sort of died or been oh. exposed to lots of radiation. This is definitely, like, the worst thing. And all this time, the reactor is still burning and radiation is still spreading because it's such a hot fire down... The, it's like 3,000 degree fire. There's 1,200 tons of white hot magma at the bottom of that reactor and 195 tons of nuclear fuel burning in that. So that's why the radiation levels are getting higher and higher. And because of the radiation and the heat, it's impossible to get closer than a few hundred metres above using helicopters. So they put, try to f- put the fire out uh, by sealing the reactor by throwing uh, sandbags into it. They hope to smother the flames and fill the reactor with sand and boric acid, which neutralises radiation. So okay. they keep the throwing hundreds and hundreds of bags. Uh, the area above the reactor is 15 times the lethal dose, and some of these 600 pilots make 33 trips in a single day. And uh, it is estimated that they are all severely poisoned and die. Oh. It's really, really bad. But the sand starts melting from the intense heat of the fire and cracks begin to appear in the makeshift plug in the sand, which cause the temperature to rise. Oh. So it's getting... Now, so they've sealed it, but, now that, but because it's sealed, it's getting hotter in there. Jesus. So scientists were worried that if it got to a certain temperature, a second explosion much worse than the original would happen. So sand wasn't working, so they started dropping lead into the hole, uh, chunks of lead. The heat was enough to melt the lead and it sealed the hole. But some lead vapours uh, start going into the atmosphere. And guess what? Lead is also very dangerous. Really? So now they're adding... It's, they've replaced nuclear stuff with like lead going into the air and that's not good for people to breathe in either. Hmm. Uh, the fire is still burning under the lead seal and the cement block underneath the magma is in danger of cracking and letting it drip through the magma and the radiation. And the water the firemen poured during the first hours of the disaster has pulled below the slab and if the radioactive magma makes contact with the water, it will make a... Uh, a chain reaction was set off an even bigger explosion. So now they're worried, holy shit, there's water under there and there's magma dripping through and if it touches through, uh, the explosion would be three to five megatons. And I'll explain, I had no idea what that meant. Meaning that a city, the city of Minsk, 300 kilometres away, that would have been destroyed if this explosion goes off. And uh, much of Europe would have been uninhabitable. So real, real bad. Holy shit. Like you people talking about Chernobyl, I had no idea. Destroying a town 300 k's away. Yeah, and I had no idea how bad it it potentially could have been. Let's say, for example, so like in Melbourne, 300 k's, it would wipe out like all of... Geelong's gone. All of the towns along the Great Ocean Road are gone. That's just one direction. Holy crap. I didn't really thought 300 kilometers is such a long way. It's a long yeah. way. Like Apollo Jeez. Bay where I have it's to like go if, beach. If Melbourne house, went out, it would be that. like halfway, you know, a third of the way into the all of Victoria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll stay. 300, so, that's, so they're really freaking out about wow. this. Wow. Very, very scared. So what they do is they drain the water from underneath, which is which actually is a crisis averted. They can do that remotely. No, what they do is they, uh, they get guys travel into the reactor via tunnels uh, where big power cables have been. They walk in there and they have to navigate through the rubble and stuff. And they examine the scene using a, a camera. They put a camera through, like one of those tiny little peephole cameras, and find that uh, magma has cracked the cement and is seeping into the dirt below the plant. So now there's no water there, but below the, that dirt is a waterway that supplies the entire country with water. Great. So now radiation might drip into the water, and uh, this is also cl- connected to the Black Sea, and it could like poison oh all the ocean, God. like a yeah. lot of ocean. Uh-huh. Fuck's sake! So ten thousand miners are shipped in from around the Soviet Union. It's decided they will dig a big tunnel underneath the plant, where they build a room two meters high and thirty meters wide. And the initial plan is to put a liquid nitrogen cooling system to set up to try and cool it all down. Uh, the men walk around the clock in a tunnel with no ventilation and the temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Because no. it's too hot for them to wear protective gear, so they dig without masks. And uh, they oh. try, they dig really deep to try and keep away from the radiation, like but they Bikram still get a bit. It's like Bikram digging. It is. It's like digging in Bikram yoga. 
Yeah, I know, Dave. I said Bikram digging. I didn't. I didn't feel the need to explain. Hey, fucking. Anyway, do go on. I thought it was. Uh, it might have been missed by Matt, so I repeated it for him. <laughs> well, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Fuck off, Dave. <laughs> do fuck off. <laughs> hey, I. I feel like everything they've done has been a mistake. Almost is that literally everything? It's, it's not a it's good pretty, idea. Pretty, pretty bad. So they're digging without masks. Digging without masks. And, and they're, they're like not right told how dangerous it is at the time. Oh, why won't they tell anybody anything? I don't think they'd do it. Yeah, I think that most oh. people would be like, oh, oh, oh probably my not. Run. Yeah, run That's away. That's awful, though. Yeah. It's really, really bad. But I have also read um, uh, interviews with survivors of these miners, and they're like, um, oh, well, we were aware that it was pretty bad, yeah. but uh, it was our duty. So there's some incredibly brave men. Well, do you know what it is? It's like, well... You know, you'd be in the mindset of it's better that I get sick rather than this destroy. Yeah, exactly. Well, everything. I, yeah, well, it will probably kill us. Kill us anyway. So. Exactly. Like it yeah. will kill everybody. Well, that's pretty great from those people. Oh, I'd be a big old coward. Though. Yeah, me too. I'd be, like, I'd be oh. like, oh, is that? Did you want us to start today? I've got the flu. Yeah. Mm. If I was a miner, I'd be digging a hole um, somewhere else <laughs> and hiding in it. <laughs> You could probably just do that anyway. You don't have to be a miner to dig a, a hole, hole to hide in. No, digging holes. All right. is... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Digging holes. Nice. Yeah, all right. Jess, after the show, um, we're going to go watch you dig, in a, dig a hole and, and hide in it. Big enough to live in. Okay. Dig yourself out of this hole, Jess. Yeah. yeah. I think you've, well, you've proved to be quite good at digging holes, haven't you? As Dave just said. <laughs> See, two can uh, two can repeat, play the repeat game, <laughs> repeat <yeah>. the joke <laughs> game. Thank you. Uh, so these ten thousand miners, in a little over a month, they dig a what, 150 meter tunnel, wow. which a job, if they weren't working under those conditions, would usually take three months. So they're just working around the clock, really, really hard stuff. But the liquid nitrogen system is never set up. Instead, they just fill that tunnel with concrete, and um, that stops the radiation dripping through the, oh, to okay. the water below. Okay. Great, well, so that's, that's a huge win. So that's a big win. That's a win, great. It's the first win they've had so far. Good yep. job, everybody. But those miners, one in four of them won't make it to the age of 40. So oh, it's boy. big sacrifice by those guys. So now you have to clean everything up. So you've sort of stopped the... You've sealed the hole. You've got concrete underneath. It's not going to explode anymore, but everything in around that area is covered in radiation. So 100,000 Army Reserve soldiers and 400,000 civilians, including like medical staff, engineers and miners, are called in to help with the clean-up. So 500,000 people. These people are dubbed... The Chernobyl liquidators. They're called liquidators. Because they all became liquid within uh, three years of the disaster. Matthew. Is that true? That's not true. Okay. Sorry, Jess. I said that like it was a fact. Is that what upset no, you? No, it was that it was, they became liquids. These people are heroes. What have you done? I was, I was under the impression podcast. that you... Congratulations. You're you had no respect for the dead. I don't know where you got that in. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to many of our previous episodes <laughs> for such references. <laughs> Man, it would be so good now if in the edit I just chop in clips of you going, fuck the dead. I, I will tell you that pro- some of these 500,000 people may have been accountants. Huh. Wow. It's possible. I mean, there's half a million people. What are the chances that not one of them is trained in accounting? Yeah. What are the chances? A little silver so, lining there for you, Jess. Fuck them. <laughs> All of them. All of them. Bloody hell. For associating... With an accountant. Mm-hmm. So you see one accountant, you'll take out 500,000 people. Eat, to no get problem. To I have, I'm glad it exploded. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh. Is that the sound of the reactor again? <laughs> Jesus, it's really whirring his head over there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Tim Allen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, everything is covered in radioactive dust, so everything in this in this exclusion zone is cleaned and washed, which is a massive job. Houses are either cleaned of radioactive dust or simply knocked down and just buried. From the sky, helicopters drop uh, thousands of tons of a sticky liquid that co- coagulates and plasters radioactive dust to the ground, so it's not going up in the air anymore. It's pretty clever. Sticky liquid. Okay, so we've got <laughs> so we've sticky got, liquid. We've, we've got, got rods. rods. Gaping holes. Gaping, Gaping holes. holes. Um, explosions inside of... My pants. I mean... <laughs> A reactor core. I mean, their reactor core. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> All right, so they're cleaning stuff up. Stuff's getting a bit better, but eight weeks after the explosion, the liquidators have to tackle the heart of the problem. The reactor itself, which has been covered up by lead, but is still 
very unstable, has to be isolated by a giant, what they call sarcophagus, where they're going to build a massive room around it and just encase it. But the first, the roof of the plant must be cleaned of thousands of pieces of radioactive graphite. They're all tiny little pieces of like little mm. rock-looking things, but they're all highly radioactive. At first, the cleanup is done by remote control operated robots, but the radi- radiation is so strong it starts messing with their circuits. Oh, man. So it's too radioactive for robots, damn it. So they decide that people must be used. Yeah, sure. If the robots can't handle it, people can. Yes, yeah, so, but one piece of this graphite kill gives off enough radiation to kill a person in less than one hour, so the, the soldiers chosen for the job are nicknamed bio-robots. No human has ever worked in zones as radioactive as this. It's the most radioactive sort of work zone ever. They are sent onto the roof with uh, hastily made hand-sewn lead suits for, for 45 seconds at a time, because that's all your body can sort of take. You run up there with your shovel, you've got 45 seconds, you're in a team of eight, you pick up one piece of graphite with a shovel, you go to the edge and you throw it off, and that's your job, 45 seconds. And then you die. So that's and it's like, still where are they throwing the it off? <laughs> oh, they just don't want it on the roof anymore, so they, oh, they put okay. on the on the, um, on the ground. So like That's you know, nice. bulldozers. Just, why didn't anybody just up. get a leaf blower? Well, I was looking at it, I've, and I've watched video of them do it. They get up there with a tiny shovel. They do a tiny. It would have been much better if someone ran up with a bucket. Someone came with a shovel, filled the bucket for forty-five seconds, yeah. ran to the end, tossed the bucket off. I should have been doing this thing. Or a leaf blower. Or a leaf blower. <laughs> no wonder that person Ooh. committed suicide. Yeah, he was. Um, Felt a lot of pressure because it was not handled very well. Graphite sh- uh, blower? Because they don't have a leaf blower quite blow the graphite. If they're tiny little bits. Are they tiny turn, little turn bits? Turn it up quite to what? your maximum setting. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. You get heavy leaves sometimes. You do yeah. too. And, and when I you talk do. in an electric one, we'll get a, one of those diesel powered ones. Oh, diesel. Okay. Maybe nuclear powered. Nuclear powered. Oh, oh. now we're talking about now a nuclear powered leaf blower to blow hey, off the imagine, nuclear material. Imagine if the blower could harness the nuclear power. <laughs> It took three and a half thousand of these bio robots, two and a half weeks of shoveling around the clock. And every interview I read or watched in documentaries, the people that were exposed to radiation speak of having a metallic taste in their mouths. Have you Ooh. ever had a metallic taste? Yeah, but not from radiation. You're not, not in a good, good place. From licking a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think this spoon might be radioactive. <laughs> no wonder me neutral grain's been tasting weird. The problem is the spoon Jess was talking about was plastic. That's the real problem. Yeah, that's the real problem. <laughs> I'm only allowed to eat with plastic cutlery. As a reward, each of these bio-robots, uh, for their very brave efforts, received a liquidator certificate oh. from the army. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> and, a and they all died. And a 100 ruble bonus, which is equivalent to 100 US dollars. So 100 not, bucks. Not very much for putting your life on the line. and a fucking and a certificate. participation certificate. Yeah. And they probably all died later, am I right? Or a lot of them did. Yep. Fuck you. Keep your hundred rubles. Get fucked. And also, in hindsight, yeah, yeah. fuck your rubles. That's fuck my Matt rubles. Stewart impression. Fuck, fuck your rubles, off. Mate. Fuck your rubles. Fuck your rubles. Overall, their effort reduced the level of radiation on the roof by 35%. Great. So, it worked quite a lot, but in hindsight, experts claim the level of radiation was unacceptable for any human being to ever work in. So, oh. real bad. Over the next seven months, the reactor is... The reactor is completely covered in a big building, the sarcophagus. All up the building and clean up. So what they do is they build it off-site and with these thousands of pieces and then put it together on-site because mm-hmm. they can't be near it for very long. And uh, if any piece, it's like a jigsaw is off, it'll fuck the whole thing. But incredible engineering makes it so it all works perfectly. Yeah, but they've made some good choices in the past, haven't mm-hmm. they? So let's yep. trust their engineering. Yeah, well, I definitely did not. All up the building and clean up cost 18 billion rubles. But overall damage caused by the Chernobyl disaster is estimated at some 235 billion US dollars. So nearly a quarter of a trillion dollars. is All because this guy wanted to get the test done in the middle of the night. What a dick. 400 times more radioactive material was released from Chernobyl than by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. 400 times. Uh, Due to radioactive fallout, Belarus, which is uh, next to the Ukraine and... uh, got a lot of the sort of smoke blown across it, lost one-fifth of all agricultural lands. It's also led to contamination of around a quarter of Belarusian forests. A rehabilitation of the areas is still ongoing. Uh, since 1986, Belarus has spent $18 billion on this purpose. Annually, Belarus still spends 5% of their GDP on cleanup. Oh 30 years God. later. Wow. Still 5%. 
Uh, human damage of the accident was 2 million people who suffered from its consequences, with over 1.3 million people, including half a million of children and adolescents who still live in contaminated areas. Oh. So still cleaning it up. Uh, medical effects of the disaster saw a dramatic, dramatic growth of cancer, uh, thyroid cancer being the bulk of most cancer cases. But the USSR only ever acknowledged a certain amount of people died from Chernobyl disasters, and then other people have estimated that many more thousand. So they, they sort of st- they st- didn't really own it there, right. which is not really cool. Oh. So Chernobyl now, 30 years later, the 30-kilometre exclusion zone is still in place, but uh, 197 people are estimated to still live in the zone. Live really? In the zone. Yes, mostly older people that refuse to leave. And uh, for a while that was illegal, but now the Ukraine government accepts that they're allowed to live there. But it's very, very dangerous to live there. This, Shit. this absolutely blew my mind. The nuclear power plant itself, Chernobyl, continued to be used for 15 years after the disaster. What? Because it had three other reactors. So people still would have to work and keep that going. For 15 years, it was only shut down in the year 2000. What? Isn't that just unbelievable? Wouldn't you just be mm. like, no, nah, this is terrible. Let's shut it all down. 15 years later. No, that doesn't make sense. I know. So Why people would you still in work the middle there? of the exclusion zone? Yes, yeah, so some people the would go into work are. every day, yeah. And some people still work there every day because the original hastily built sarcophagus, which they had to build in a few months, it was only designed to last for 30 years, which now it's been 30 years. In 2010, the construction of a new casing began. It's a giant arch shape that covers the reactor and the old sarcophagus. So oh, it's my so God. Big. It's just going to get bigger and bigger. I imagine that it's just going to have to get bigger. Like, you'll have to be like... Because like, like you can't knock down the old one, so you just build a new one. Yeah, and it's, it's so get strange bigger that they can't do anything with it like they have to just cover it up yeah just cover it like up you can't get rid of it you just got to cover it up in the future it's hopes that technology will come along that sort of gets rid of radiation but so far we don't know how oh to do that oh my god can you so like can you you can't go there can you uh you can go on tours you can't go right up to the is reactor. it sick that i'd i'd be interested you will be sick <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. No, I, I'd be very interested. In so see, especially the abandoned town, exactly. as it were. Like the time capsule would be real cool. That'd to be see. fascinating and very eerie. I'm gonna. That'll be on YouTube, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, I'll yeah. It is YouTube, but that's probably it easier. Yeah, I know. Good call. Just I mean, you're gonna be in Queensland, so same thing. So while you're in Queensland, Matt and I'll have a couple of weeks off. We'll visit uh, the Mongolian giant horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll go to the uh, the Birkin Wheels Mega Cafe. Trotsky. Mega Trotsky. The name of the horse. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll, of course, visit um, the town of Pripyat. Yeah. Great, you guys have got a big couple we've of got, weeks we're coming, coming up. up. Yeah, well, you know, you, you're off gallivanting. We no, might as well. Going to we're not that. just going to sit here and wait for you, Jess. Fair enough. I wouldn't ask you to. Why don't you live your life? It's very nice. Well, I was going to sit here like a dog waiting for its owner. <laughs> Aww. You do get very excited when you see me. I do. And I will be podcasting around the clock, so if you want to listen to that two-week-long podcast, we'll release it on a separate channel coming up. Just of Dave being very hungry. Just me going, fuck, I'm bored. <laughs> I really should have thought of that. I didn't bring a charger either. My phone's yeah, my dead. My phone's dead. Laptop's dead. I've got a packet of nuts found. Jess, Who knows Jess, those Jess are. literally told me not to wait and to go home and live my life, but I'm here anyway. I'm just trying to become her favourite member of the podcast. Yeah, that won't happen. <laughs> Don't try, mate. Don't even try. All right, I'll give up. I'll give up. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably for the best, mate. Uh, the tomb uh, that they're building over the old tomb is predicted to be completed by the end of next year, 2017. Everyone, So people still have to work there, obviously. Everyone employed to build the tomb is monitored for, by, um, radio, for radiation these days. So it's, it's, okay. it's a safer place to work now. Yeah, sure. What happens is every day you go into work and they scan your body, and at the end of the day they scan your body. And if you have met your radiation dose for that year... Cause they can estimate how much you can have in a, in a year without being affected, uh, then you can't come to work again. So Do they still pay you? I don't know. That'd be cool. It'd be annoying if you got fired. Yeah, that's unfair. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> horrible. But it also, if it's the other way around, then you just be like, oh, I'm, gonna, don't, you know, I'm just going to lean it over into this radioactive <laughs> corner of the room <laughs> so we can just get just, just that enough. Just a tiny bit more. Yeah. Not enough to kill me, but just enough yeah. to get some annual leave. And rub it in your gums. <laughs> I should do it. <laughs> oh, no, I've overdone it. <laughs> oh, no. My gums, oh, my teeth are falling out. No, not again. Oh, and I've still got to go to work tomorrow. Say not again because it happened when I was a baby. I lost my baby teeth. But that was a different... Different time. That was just a natural thing. That, that was happened. not from radiation. 
Do you think that's weird that that happens? That yeah, we lose like our it teeth? It's so creepy. The, when I think about it, it really freaks me it out. It creeps yeah, me out a like lot. Have you ever out. seen the skull photo of a skull with the baby teeth and the adult teeth waiting? Oh, above? waiting to come down. Oh, oh yeah, gross. Not right? into it. Where do they come from? Ugh. Ugh. Anyway. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that's bad. They must just grow. Like they're not always there, right? So they have to grow, yeah, don't form. they? Well, this conversation so is leaving a bad what? taste in my mouth. Like metallic? Metallic taste, that's right. I think I might be being poisoned by this microphone. <laughs> I, uh, I put a little Your on there. Your smug face is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It's so good. My, my smug face, which is always there. <laughs> AKA okay, your, your face. face. <laughs> uh, the remains of reactor number four will remain radioactive for 1,000 years. You're kidding. People still like the idea of using nuclear power. Well, I know it's a lot safer now, but I mean... This isn't the best poster boy for it, is I've it? Got a list, I've got a list of the places still having nuclear power. We'll talk about that at the end, maybe. Uh, it's likely that no further decontamination work will take place until the gamma ray dosage at the site is reduced to background levels in about 300 years. Oh, shit. Yeah. But different radi- uh, elements... Mega one! Mega one! Um, yeah, it's difficult to get a blanket rule on when it's going to be safe again because so many different chemicals were released. Some are safer after 30 years and some continue to be deadly in 300 years. That's so, so fascinating, though, that like at some point in 300 years' time, people are going to have to be cleaning up a mess <laughs> yeah. that we made in the 80s. <sighs> oh, I know. It's, an, it's just crazy. There's nothing it? that we're still dealing with that happened 300 years ago. Nothing I can think of. Do you know what I mean? Like In like a chemical sort of way. Or, like, what else have we... What else... Oh. Still building, like, Grata Familia in... Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. The Gaudi design, 150 years l- later. Yeah, the cath- big cathedral. Big cathedral. But that's obviously a lot more fun for people. Because <laughs> they're building, like, a really cool building. They're not having to deal with, uh, like, a terrible decision that someone made at 1am in the morning 30 see, years amazing. ago. that's amazing. Like, he, he fucked up big time. He fucked up. That's a big fuck And up. I saw an interview before him with he di- went before he died, and uh, he said he didn't take responsibility. <gasps> he said if it hadn't happened then, because of the bad safety there, it was inevitable. So I, don't blame me; blame the power Look, plant. Maybe that's a point. But, but I think you've got to still, take a bit of responsibility, yeah, mate. Come on. I guess you sort of yeah. have to if you want to live on, and you've got, you'd have to have some answers for yourself, right? Oh. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise you couldn't live with yourself, no. could you? But yeah, he's he's full of shit. He's believing his own bullsh. Bullsh. So bullsh. believing his own bullsh. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and people still continue to face health stuff from it. People are dying young. Um, people have uh, conditions, digestive, circulatory, nervous, respiratory diseases, cancers, other stuff from that. Kids are born with um, defects, stuff like this, all because it's it's really it's really an awful situation. Kids yeah. are being born still. Yeah. With defects. 30 years later. Bloody hell. Oh, oh because the parents got... Yeah. yeah and then as they have, kids child, got contaminated yeah, and, and then they, um, their junk was messed up. And oh, then a lot of kids, fuck. like, yeah, have, this thyroid cancer is the, the one thing that a lot of people have. It's interesting. Oh, and are they going to pass that on? Is it, so is this like... This is what I was asking before. Is there going to be a, like a, a mutant species? No, I think it's going to... I think it will get... Um, Better X Men as so, it goes so to speak. as time passes, but like yeah, it's just such an awful thing that people have to deal there's with. There's no way are you saying there's no way possible that this is going to help leap the evolution of man forward. Yeah, no, because then the what was the guy's name who's all into it? Then he'd be like, yeah, well, you know, I did that. I mean, I know he's dead, but yeah. oh yeah, that guy could claim it. He'd be like, yeah, well, you're welcome, mm-hmm. world. The only reason we built built beat the machines was because I fucked up in the eighties. Yeah. No worries. And then we just get t-shirts made that say, I fucked up in the 80s. Oh, who didn't? <gasps> if you didn't, you weren't there. <laughs> no, you probably. Yeah. We, we, we were there. definitely not there. We were not we there. there. We were born literally the first year of the 90s. Literally? Wow. 1990. <laughs> Bang on. We missed it. We missed all of the 80s. Missed the entire thing. And after reading about this, I'm happy about that. Me too. I really, really am. Although the leg warmers would have been pretty fun, but... Yeah. 90s had Saved by the Bell, so, you know. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning and I, na, 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 I think I'm going to make it on. I also didn't know that sentence in the middle. I think I'm going to get this. 
booking and a thing mm-hmm. in the corner just the to be bus on, on time. It's alright, cause I'm saved, saved by, by the bell. bell. Be 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 oh, no, oh, he's no. ordered a pizza. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I hate Capuchosa. <laughs> Uh, many people point to the disaster at Chernobyl as the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. That was like one of the first times they had to be open with the world about stuff because uh, they had like big investigations and sort of a bit like you know in North Korea stuff happens behind the scenes now when you don't hear about it. Yeah, but like at least something good came of it. You know, they worked on their communication skills and they were open with the rest of the world. It's like a it's well, like a relationship. You slightly be, open you with the world. Open. Yeah, well, it's they still than won't nothing. be like. For like the first fifteen years, they were like, "Yeah, only ninety people died from it." Like those people that died in the first day. Yeah, only like, ninety people. Only ninety. Yeah, yeah. but ever, but then other people are like, "Ah, oh, no, I think it's in the thousands." And they're oh. like, "That's cool." Coincidence. Yeah, yeah. It's something else. It's something else. Probably bad. A lot of food poisoning at the yeah. local Taco Bill. You guys always yeah. blame us for everything. Yeah, but you know on. what? Taco Bill has been well well known to have radioactive tacos. Yeah. Come on, guys. Cancer food. Cancer food. I knew I shouldn't have got the cancer taco. Matt, you ordered it. But have we learned? And I will tell you, the answer is simply no. 57 accidents have occurred since the Chernobyl disaster at nuclear power plants. About 60% of all of them have occurred in the United States of America. Yeah, but Americans don't learn. Uh, the worst accident happened in Japan at the Fukushima power plant oh, yes. in 2011, which they're still dealing with. I will tell you that that and Chernobyl are the only nuclear disasters ever to register a seven on the disaster nuclear disaster scale. Wow. How high does that go? It only goes to seven. Oh. And some people estimated that if it went higher, Chernobyl would have been a nine. Oh, wow. shit. So a nine out of seven, that's how bad it was. Jeez. Fukushima's got an exclusion zone as well, right? Yeah, and Japan have, uh, since they've shut down all their nuclear power plants. Yeah, get wow. rid of it. Well, 31 countries still have nuclear reactors, totaling 439 reactors worldwide. The USA have 100, France has 58, Japan's 48, Russia still has 34. France isn't that big. Why do they have 58? It's a lot, isn't it? No, well, it's quite it's a the, big majority of, the majority of their power is nuclear. I, I went for a ride through France a couple of years ago, and I, I, I'd never seen one live, but they look like the Simpsons, you know, the big cooling tower. Mm. Crazy. The Simpsons got it right. Yeah. But yeah, so many places have them. It's uh, Spain, Germany, Sweden... Ukraine still has 15. Ugh. Slovakia, Finland, Pakistan, Bulgaria, South Africa, Mexico, Brazil, Slovenia, Netherlands, Iran. Oh, so many, so many and have. just need one idiot. Oh, no, I mean, they've probably got better safety procedures now, but it's just, you know, human error. It's so... And, it, and, it, and they don't fix it soon enough, and it does just take out 300 kilometres. It's mm. like, oh, my God. We don't have any? No, Australia is one of the... Um, a few People countries that have said actively, like, against no them, deal. yeah. Good. Yeah, so we are opposed. So is uh, New Zealand, Italy, Ireland, Greece, Denmark, Malta, and Portugal. Very good. But people still try and uh, talk about um, h- how great they are. I think because, unlike fossil fuels, they don't affect uh, CO2 levels oh, as sure. much. They're much safer in that respect. But I don't, after reading about this, oh, I don't know. It's a very, very... It, they're potentially dangerous. I still just cannot believe that we aren't all just going gung ho at renewable energy. Yeah, it just seems crazy. It's the keys in the title. Yeah, renewable. Renewable. Just go with the body. Oh. Let's just go. Fucking... Jess has got the renewable. <laughs> Put him in energy. Let's just get stuck <laughs> into it. It just feels like if we just everyone decided this is all we're going to do from now on, it would advance so much quicker. And it's like it's just. It's there, the sun. It's already given us the... Anyway. <laughs> I don't know enough about it to rant. Why don't you it just, just do fe- it? It feels like that's an obvious thing. I'm guessing there's a reason why it hasn't happened. Sun. <laughs> wind. Water. Fire. Earth. Heart. Heart. <laughs> Go planet. Now your, your powers combine. I, I am Captain, Captain Planet. Pla- Captain Planet. Planet. Oh, he's the hero. Gonna take nuclear pollution down to zero. Gonna help him put it asunder. Bad guys who like to look and plunder. Very good. You'll pay for this, Captain Planet. I put a couple, two nuclear uh, things in there so we could keep that in. It's on brand for this week. Yeah. You really don't have to. That's fine. I'm glad. We I'm sing. always happy to edit out the songs. Uh, you don't like sing songs. I enjoy. Oh, I, I like. Sing. I like Jess singing. 
Well, I'm sorry. That is the the story. I'm sorry if that was a, a depressing story. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not very h- upbeat or. It was no uh, DB. No DB Cooper. No Cooper. But, but it's still. I feel like uh, I knew very, very little yeah, about that, and I'm very that. happy that I know more about it. Uh, yeah, I really knew nothing about it apart from it was a big bloody disaster. And some people say that uh, it's 30 years on now. People are starting to forget how bad it was yeah. because obviously Jess and I and Matt, you were so young that at the time you don't realise how. Bad the disaster. Yeah, is. you've heard of it, but you've got no no idea. Yeah, you're like, oh yeah, but they say they fixed it. It's all good. It's all so good, good now. on you for spreading the word through our widely received podcast. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll be up next back next week with possibly a more upbeat topic from you, Matt Stewart. Oh me. <laughs> we be going okay. into the hat for yours. Yeah, always into the hat for me. There are a few disasters in the hat now, but I'll. Uh, Maybe we'll uh, t- take, take a week people. off from disaster. No, no I think I'll, I'm as long d- as the story's interesting, I like, like, like learning. To yeah. me, it's the hat rules, so whatever the hat gives me, I respect it. Okay, okay. The hat knows what, what the people need. The hat, the hat wants what it wants. The hat wants what it wants. That's what I say. That's what I say. If you want to get into that hat, you can uh, tweet us at dogoonpod. Email us, dogoonpod at gmail.com. It's always good to hear from you guys. Um, but yeah, until next week, uh, stay out of trouble and uh, go say hi to Jess in Queensland. Do a road trip. Yeah, come visit me in Queensland. Matt and I will be in Mongolia at the giant yeah. horse. Send me pictures, please. All right. Okay. We'll do one of those ones where we're standing in front of it, making it look like we're patting it on the head. Classic. Classic horse so play. So good. So good. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.